Hi and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to show you how I've been creating some of my Christmas cards this year. I'm going to do a 4 by 6 card and I'm going to create a, a slimish panel that's one and a half inches wide on the side here and then add a sentiment somewhere on this side, Merry Christmas or something like that. So what I have here is a piece of mixed media paper and you can use mixed media paper, watercolour paper or any card that will take watercolours well. Um, and I have drawn a line across here five and a half inches up so that it will be about five, well it will be five and a half inches on my card and I've broken this section up into one and a half inches wide so that's how big the panel is going to be. And this method of putting it all on the same piece of paper and then cutting it down later is a really quick way of creating lots of watercolour Christmas cards. So I've now got water all over my stencil, which I don't want, so I'll just give that a quick dry. So my panel is going to feature baubles, which are my favourite Christmas ornaments. I do love circles and I use them a lot in my arts and crafts. Uh, so I've got a circle stencil here and a Uniball Eye Micro Pen in black, which is waterproof and fade proof. And obviously, if you're going to put water on top of this and you don't want the ink to shift, you're going to need a waterproof pen. So what I'm going to do is go around and draw some circles and they're going to overlap um, the lines that are coming down. So when I slice this up at the end, I'm going to have part baubles coming in from the side and I really like that look. So what I want is an odd number of baubles on each panel. So I'm going to go along now and count how many baubles will be showing on each panel. So this one's only got two, which means I want to add three more. Well, I've got, I want five is what I'm, <laughs> is what I'm thinking. Five on each panel. So that's what I'm going to aim for. So now this panel here has got one, two, three, four, five whole or part baubles. Now this panel has got one, two, three, four, and it's only got one whole bauble and there's a space up here. So I'm going to put uh, one more, uh, slightly larger than that one, I think. And then we'll have a look and see what it looks like. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, this one's only got two. Um, I didn't think this through, they're a bit level for me, but when I chop it up, it'll probably look fine. So one, two, three, four, five, and that's quite a thin sliver, so I'm actually going to break my rule and go for a small one up here. So even though it's got six on it, it'll probably only look like five. Now this one, again, that's a tiny little sliver, which may or may not disappear when I cut things up. So I'm gonna add, I've got one, two, I'm gonna add four more. You have to be careful when moving the stencil not to smudge any wet ink. So I think everything's got five baubles. I'm not gonna put the strings on yet. I like to do that afterwards once I've cut everything up because then I can get the strings parallel with the cut lines. But what I will do is I'm gonna go around with my pen and create wobbly circles. So they've got lovely straight circles now. Straight circles, can you have straight circles? Um, even, no, what am I looking at? I don't know what the word is, but you know what I mean. But I want to make them look particularly wobbly and hand-drawn. That's just the style that I'm going for with this card, or these cards rather. And go round them a couple of times to give them that wobbly look. And the reason I use the stencil to start with is to make sure they do actually look like circles and don't end up looking like eggs or something. So I'll do that to all of them. And once I've done this, 
I will uh, give it a blast with my hairdryer to make sure the ink is completely dry before I add any colour to them. So waterproof pens only become waterproof when they dry. If I don't like any of these circles, if they're a bit too wobbly or uneven, once I've got the watercolour on, they will change their appearance. But also once the watercolour is dry, I can go in with a pen again and add some thicker lines or some more wobbly lines to get them how I want them to look. So now that's dry, it's time to add some colour and I'm using watercolour paints. You can use whatever you have. You could use inks, you can use marker pens to create some paint. You can use powders like brushes or luscious powders or what are they called, mica powders, those kind of things to create some paint. So anything you've got that you can turn into a paint, feel free to use. These are Mungyo, and I got these from Amazon. They're very relatively, very relatively, they're very reasonably priced, and they're very good quality, I find. So I'm going to use number 816, 826, and 814, because for me, Christmassy colours, I'm not really into the traditional red and green. I find it too... Uh, jarring I don't know why I just don't like it very much I like a nice purpley pinky bluey Christmas so that's what I'm going to use today so first of all I'm going to make up my paint palette by adding some colour to my glass mat here and diluting it with water so it's a nice runny consistency same with the pink here and same with the blue. The predominant colour will be purple with some pink and blue highlights. Now I'm going to add water to one panel's worth of baubles. So I'm going to work on one panel at a time. And this is called a wet in wet technique, if you didn't know. You put water down or paint down and then you add some colour to it and it just gives a lovely soft washy effect. What I have done is I've left a small area in the top right corner of the baubles without any water on to act as a highlight so the colour won't go there um, because the colour will only go where there is water. So here I'm adding paint to the bottom left of the baubles and I'm letting the paint just do its own thing and move around and I can go in and poke about a bit to encourage it to move where I want it to fill up any gaps. Now I'm going to pop in a little bit of pink again, sort of round the bottom. There, and now for a little bit of blue, just dot that around so it can mix and mingle, make friends with the other colours. I'm going to leave that now and keep my eye on it. And if it looks like it needs a bit of help, Moving around, I can go in with my brush and I'm going to carry on and do exactly the same thing to all the other baubles on the piece of paper here. One thing you can do for a bit of visual interest is sprinkle on a bit of salt and this will make the watercolour uh, pool in different ways. So I might do that on a couple of panels. Leave that to dry. So I'm tidy up this bit here. I'm not too keen on the shape of that highlight but that's okay now. And I just, this bit here is pulled a bit funny around the outside so I'll just turn that into a shape that I like. Same with this one but that's okay. 
it's okay to go outside the lines. So there we have it, that's all done. I've added a bit of salt here and a bit of salt here and I'm gonna leave that to dry naturally now so that'll take a little while and then we'll come back and uh, finish the card. So this is all dry now. Here's a little close up. These ones here had the salt on, so did these. And you can see they look a bit mottled, whereas the ones without salt are uh, just sort of watercolory, really. And I like the look of both. So I'm going to scrape the salt off and then we're going to splatter on some metallic paint for a bit of Christmassy shimmer and sparkle. So before you take the salt off, you've got to make sure it's completely dry or you'll smear paint everywhere. So usually I'll just give it a quick brush with my hand to get any. Oh, you see, look, that wasn't dry. Never mind, we'll deal with that later. I might be able to, actually, if I get some clean water and do that, I might be able to lift off that colour. Disaster averted. Some watercolour colours are quite staining and will stain the paper the moment they touch it, but some colours aren't staining so they lift off really easily so there we go panic over so I'm just going to give that a blast with my hair dryer to make doubly sure it's dry so as I was saying you can brush the salt off dry paint with your fingers and if there's any stubborn bits I just give it a gentle sweep with something like a ruler and it will knock off any bits of salt that are still sticking to it and I've noticed a slight smudge there as well that must have been really wet so this is my hybrid prima metallic accents palette and I think I'm just going to splash on some gold this is quite a dark gold but it will contrast nicely with the purples and give a kind of majestic -y regal feel I think purple and gold always do that for me so I've loaded up my brush, it's not too wet, and I'm going to lift it and just splatter. doesn't matter if it goes on the baubles, doesn't matter if it goes on the blank piece at the top, because I'll be able to use a splattery gold thing on something else. And to get some finer flicks. To chop it up, I'm going to use my guillotine, because it gives me nice, straight lines. And I'm going to erase any pencil lines that remain on my panels. So now it's time to add some strings to our baubles and I'm going to freehand this with wobbly-ish lines but trying to keep them parallel so they look like they're actually hanging down. Give it a couple of lines and then just a, an idea of a bow and the same here. Going all the way to the top. Now this one's got to go all the way up. You can put your strings behind or in front of the baubles that are above it. Um, obviously when you've only got part of a bauble coming in, you don't necessarily want to add a string. if you want draw the little um, I don't know what they call them the caps that sit on top of a bauble where you put the string through I'll do it on this one so something like that with a circle you could color that in gold or leave it white and then add the string and a bow So if we bring our card blank back in, I'm going to put that there. I'm just wondering if it needs maybe a black outline. So I'm going to trim it down ever so slightly, um, a little bit from the bottom and a little bit from the top and a tiny little bit off the side. 
And then I'm going to give it a slim black border from Black Card. Got my little bag of scraps there. And use some tape runner. I'm going to add a simple Merry Christmas and I've typed it out using my typewriter and I'm going to cut that out with this stitched rectangle die. Now I could add this overlapping slightly like that. Um, I wonder if it needs a black outline too, just a thin one. So I've cut another one of these to pop behind here. To lift it up a little bit where it's overlapping. For a bit of extra sparkle, I've got these teeny tiny little gems that I can dot about. They're so thin, they don't add much bulk to the card, so I shouldn't stop it going through the post. And I think they just lift everything with a bit of extra brightness. So there we have it, a watercolour bauble Christmas card. Once I've finished filming this video, I will uh, make up the rest of them, probably end up looking similar to this, a similar arrangement of uh, elements on the card blank. So that's it. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope to see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.